Well, we finally got to feast our eyes upon the most epic thing of our lifetime thus far. So let's take a look at the treather trove of footage of information that has been released since. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Saturday, Starship 25 and Booster 9 lifted off from Starbase Texas for the vehicle's second test flight. And if all this happens to be news to anyone watching, allow me to just clarify that Starship is SpaceX's newest rocket designed to take humans to Mars and beyond. Although no passengers or payload was aboard for this event, just to be clear. Check out the shockwave, brah. Get pitted. Just the other day, SpaceX did release a 4K 360 video on their YouTube channel. So feel free to play with that if you haven't yet, but after the conclusion of our time together here. The world's largest rocket ever launched, by far, created the world's largest mock diamond with a thousand foot plume. More than a thousand changes have been made to the vehicle since its previous flight back in April, and those implementations did pay off, in that none of the 33 first stage Raptor engines cut out prematurely prior to stage set. As for the pad itself, minimal post-launch work is required. Elon reported on X that he personally just inspected the launch pad and it's in great condition. No refurbishment needed to the water-cooled steel plate for the next launch. Congrats to the SpaceX team and contractors for engineering and building such a robust system so rapidly. But back to the flight, 2 minutes and 48 seconds into it, a new achievement was unlocked. The goal for this day was to improve upon the first test flight from April of this year and successfully make it past staging. Elon did state before that there was only a 50% chance of that happening. Because the staging SpaceX is going for is a new type of staging no other rocket of this magnitude has done before, hot staging. Lighting Starship's six Raptor engines while still attached to the booster, which itself was still burning three of its own 33 Raptors. SpaceX posting this was the first time this technique had been done successfully with a vehicle of this size. Watch the three center engines on Starship's upper stage gimbling just after separation. Right before they ignite for hot staging, the engines angle themselves outward to direct their exhaust towards the vented interstage before recentering for ascent. Here's what that interstage between the ship and booster looks like. After successful separation, the booster immediately exfilled the area, aggressively flipping to perform a boost back burn, but such a maneuver one way or another appeared to place too much stress on the engines, whether starving one or two of propellant or violently shoving too much down their throat, so to speak. SpaceX did write later on their website that the maneuver was a success. But as teams continue to analyze the data, no official cause has yet been released as to the exact reason the booster performed a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Nevertheless, the booster did perform for this first test flight. She did her job, sacrificing herself to push Starship to the targeted velocity for separation so she can continue the mission. And so she did, burning her six engines for more than eight minutes and almost to completion before going offline. Much confusion surrounded the fate of the first Starship in space, but just after T plus eight minutes, while traveling at an altitude of 150 clicks at a velocity of 24,000 clicks per hour, you can barely notice the vehicle clacked itself, which was confirmed by SpaceX during the stream and afterward on their website, contributing it to performance data. But it was then more visibly confirmed on the ground by amateurs. Amateur tracking footage taken from the Florida Keys showed Starship's flight termination system activating and sending the nose of the vehicle tumbling in over end several times. Then another amateur video shows some unconfirmed debris streaking over Puerto Rico. NOAA's weather radar data also showed Starship's debris cloud over the Gulf. The future of space exploration is bright, especially when you light up the sky with multiple reds. Keep in mind, rapid iteration is how SpaceX builds and tests their rockets. Trial and error, as fast as possible, which is contrasted with other companies and agencies' way of building slowly with fewer test flights and fireworks. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multiplanetary. For the first time, there is a rocket that can make all life multiplanetary, a fork in the road of human destiny. SpaceX is already working the data to improve the next Starship vehicle for the third test flight. In fact, they wrote on their site that final preparations are already underway. Ship and booster static fires are next. Elon writing Starship Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. There are three ships in final production in the high bay. And he also wrote that there is a next-gen Raptor engine in development, robust enough to not require a heat shield, and more powerful with more thrust and higher specific impulse and many other improvements. The FAA wrote that they will oversee the investigation into the second flight's mishaps, but no injuries or damage to public property have been reported. And that's all we have for now, but I want to personally thank everyone who joined me live to watch this beast make war on the sky. I am still finishing up my Starship documentary, but for those of you who weren't with us, you can still catch the preview that was shown during my live stream. So stay tuned and subscribe to my channel here on Rumble and YouTube for its premiere that will be happening very soon. But do have a nominal Thanksgiving, and until next time, Godspeed.